Next, I would like to talk about database transactions. Um, and transactions are a really important part of databases because usually anything that you want to do in a database is going to require multiple steps to do. And so we're going to codify that in terms of a transaction or a series of steps that really have to have a specific uh, behavior in, in mind. So for instance, if you're going to make an order from a company like Amazon, you want to make sure that they decrement all their inventory of the proper items that you've purchased and that they charge your credit card after they've ensured that they'll deliver it and um, make sure that all those steps in the process happen. Otherwise, you don't want to have to pay for something that you're never going to receive. And, and so in order to make sure that database transactions work the way we want to, they have to have a set of properties known as ACID that are, um, that describe the behavior of, of these transactions. And so the first one for A is atomic. And what we mean by that is that these transactions act as a single unit just uh, like uh, we can't break our atoms into smaller pieces before they um, recombine uh, proper uh, into larger units. Uh, we can't break our transactions into smaller units and still think of them work. So if, if our machine breaks down or if there's a crash or it gets turned off or uh, we find out that one of the series in uh, of steps in a transaction doesn't work. We either uh, are going to have to abort that transaction because we can't do all the steps or we end up finding out that all the steps work properly and we can commit that series of steps in transactions and we'll see things work exactly like we want to. The C is for consistency. And consistency is kind of a hard idea to uh, understand separate from atomic because uh, you think of it oftentimes in terms of, of a, atomic. What consistency says is that your database starts in a good state, so we'll write good, and then it does its series of actions in the transaction and it ends up back in a good state. So both of these are consistent. And, and so you might say, well, how does that differ from atomic if we're doing a series of actions, they either all happen or they don't happen? Well, the difference here is in atomic, these are um, required by the database to enforce. Okay, and so the database either ensures that these actions happen or that they don't happen. Where is in consistency, this is programmer enforced uh, in the sense that enforced. If the, if the programmer forgets a s step in uh, the series of actions, the database has no idea that they've done that and the programmer is is the, the database is going to take all this actions minus the one that they forgot and say um all the data looks good and after doing all those actions all the data still looks good and so we need to understand what good means here uh what what good means is that that there are rules uh, or constraints that i'll write that up here constraints that the, the database has to follow constraints um, and the database is going to enforce those constraints in both this atomic and consistency situation uh, so that, that's not what I'm talking about for database enforce or programmer enforce and, and with consistency the constraints 
are met when you start off and they continue to be met when you finish. That part is database uh, enforced. The difference is it's up to the programmer to make sure that the logical ideas that are encapsulated in, in these transactions reflects what is intended. And so it's up to the programmer to make sure that they put all of the actions that are necessary to, to do that. So if we go back to our Amazon purchase as an example, if the programmer fails to um, send a request to the credit card company for money, the database isn't going to know that. The database can't inform, enforce that, that step. And, and the, all the data in the database will still look good. The database will, will believe it's um, recorded all the change in inventory. It's recorded all the change in accounts payable and accounts receivable. But we're never going to actually get that money uh, to, to be received. And so that is a, a problem. So that's what I mean difference from database enforced and, and program enforced. Uh, I is for isolation. And what isolation means is, is that if we have two transactions that are occurring at the same time, they are isolated from each other in, in the sense that one transaction does not affect the outcome of another transaction. So we don't get into a situation where because one person was withdrawing money from the bank and a second person is withdrawing money from the bank, they can both withdraw the maximum amount from the, the same account because they don't see each other, um, w would be a, a, a situation where there there's um, the isolation is is not preserved and that might seem weird um, but isolation is is uh, technically defined in terms of if we did each of these transactions uh, in sequence first one transaction then another transaction then a third transaction that we would get the same results as if we ran them all together and so um, that would prevent us from withdrawing money and then withdrawing money again. So what we're saying is we don't get the wrong results because we are running two transactions together at the same time. We still get the right results. And then our last D is for durability. And what we mean by durability is that once we say that something has been successfully committed, that it stays successfully committed. So crashes after the fact, don't, we don't lose information. You might say, well, how could that happen? Well, if you had your database all in volatile memory, then if your program crashed, you would lose the data from the memory. And so this requires some sort of non-volatile memory, like disk drives or you know solid state devices or something that doesn't require permanent uh, power up. And it also means that we don't, you know, some for some other reason, even if it's not a crash or a power failure, we don't forget that we've done a transaction that 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 data has been permanently archived. And so these are properties that we want of all databases and they're uh, difficult to do with transactions. We have to be especially careful in order to preserve these ACID properties. And, and so what we're going to quickly look at is, is how we can try to preserve those in a Rails application if you want to go into more details, again, that's where you'd want to look at the advanced database course to be able to see how the database can try to provide these four properties to users 
of, of those databases.